The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Sarah, and I'll be your technical moderator today. And before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. You have entered this webinar in listen-only mode. That simply means that you are muted, so we don't pick up any noise from your end. We do welcome and encourage you to submit your text questions via the questions pane in your GoToWebinar control panel. You may enter your questions at any time, and we will save them for a Q&A at the end of the presentation. If we don't have time to get to all the questions today, please keep entering them, and we will follow up with you offline within 48 hours. If you have any technical difficulties, please type them into that same questions pane, and I will work with you directly to resolve those as soon as possible. We are recording today's webinar, and you will receive a follow-up email with a link that will include the recording. By submitting your questions today, you agree to have them read aloud and recorded. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Without any further ado, I'd like to turn things over to your presenter today, Mike Dew. Welcome, Mike. You now have the floor. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. And welcome, everybody. Uh, we appreciate you being here with us today and trying to be respectful of your time. We're going to dive right in if uh, anybody joins a little late. Hopefully, all they're missing are my introductory remarks. So we know why you have signed up for this webinar. You know that SharePoint is an increasingly important technology in many organizations. So maybe you're curious or maybe you already know about it, but we all recognize its importance. This is especially true since Microsoft adopted a cloud-first strategy a few years back, and SharePoint is a critical component of that strategy. From our experience, most of our customers have either already implemented Office 365 or have it in their sites for their immediate future. If you're one of them, we hope that you'll find today's webinar highly valuable and informative. Before we go much further, though, let me talk a little bit about terminology. You may hear me refer to something as on-prem or on-premises, basically same thing, a couple of <laughs> just shortcuts in the uh, terminology there. Likewise, I may refer to online or cloud or Office 365, those terms also being used interchangeably. So we'll discuss on a high level the on-prem and online versions of SharePoint and what each one offers. And there's a third way, way. where both where versions both. coexist. I'm sorry? Hmm? Thought I heard a, a question? Okay, I'll, con I'll continue. Uh, and let me figure out where I was in my train of thought. Yes, okay, there, so there is a third sort of solution there instead of just on-prem and online. And uh, this is sort of a hybrid version where both of those others can coexist. Many organizations are going down this path. So if you're one of them, you could benefit from what we call our hybrid strategy. So let's move on to slide two. This is our agenda, and uh, first we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of on-prem and online versions of SharePoint from a business and application perspective, and then we'll get into the value of a hybrid architecture. Before we dive into those details, however, we want to mention that we consider a successful SharePoint implement implementation to be more than just getting the software installed with no errors showing up for the end users. Success can only be achieved when the solution adds value to the organization, and we believe that there is significant value to be found in a hybrid approach. So at the end, then we'll also have uh, a few questions and answers. Uh, let's move on to slide three, and uh, they wanted me to talk a little bit about me and my experience. I am Mike Dew. I've been in the middle of the SharePoint technology for several years. I've worked on SharePoint implementations for several Fortune 500 organizations, including an international powerhouse in the transportation space who were early adopters of the cloud-based SharePoint to deliver the company's first international internet and collaboration space. Um, so they were one large enterprise consisting of five acquisition companies that, um, that had continued really to operate as if they were independent companies long after they were bought. SharePoint was proven to be a unifying force for that company uh, through its collaborative capabilities, and now those five companies are finally starting to work as one. So SharePoint can truly change the business for the better and doesn't just have to be considered a tool. It can actually be a catalyst. One of the things that I really enjoy about SharePoint is the challenge of driving business value for our customers, like I said, and how it can be transformative. 
to see a company go from you know using email to send files around to one another and to, to try to remain organized uh, to using a collaborative uh, powerhouse of SharePoint, it's really pretty amazing uh, when it's done properly. While each organization is unique and has their own problems to correct and their own opportunities to pursue, SharePoint can be molded to meet the needs of each of those organizations to deliver something uh, unique and flexible. <clears throat> I have a, an, a sort of a little metaphor here for you. I, I remember when I was a kid, uh, one of my favorite toys were the Legos, the Lego blocks. But, you know, the old school Legos consisted mostly of these little rectangles and squares and triangles and, and not much else. Uh, so trying to come up with a solution, like uh, I, I remember being frustrated trying to create a submarine one time. And I needed a hatch, right? But there's, there's no hinges in the Lego set. So back then I felt uh, uh, fairly limited in terms of what I was capable of doing. I couldn't get it to really meet my vision. Um, but today, if you've seen Legos, they've got a piece for everything. You know, they've got hinges and wheels and uh, sliding things and all, all all kinds of different pieces, right? So I think that that's sort of a good metaphor for uh, SharePoint as well, because the modern SharePoint, now that we're moving into the cloud, offers all kinds of great capabilities, uh, and it can be malleable enough that we meet the needs of each customer. So it's great. I finally get to, to vent those frustrations of those early days with Legos, uh, except this time with SharePoint and meeting our customer needs. Uh, okay, so let's move on to uh, slide four, and we'll get into the overview of SharePoint. Sometimes our customers ask us, what is SharePoint? And it's not an easy question to answer because it can be many different things to many different people. But unlike other applications within the Microsoft Productivity Suite, SharePoint is a platform. It can be purposed for doing many different things in an organization. Let's mention its key components and focus on the graphic to the right of this slide. First at the top is a document management system. I know that says content management system, but uh, it is a document management system that has many robust features found in a lot of electronic content management systems, such as version control, workflow, retention, e-discovery, and many others. So it is also a workflow system. SharePoint has a robust and configurable workflow engine that can be used for implementing document or form-based workflows in an organization. And its workflow power can be extended with third-party tools like Nintex. Moving on along, then we get to indexing and search. Microsoft greatly enhanced SharePoint's search capability since the addition of the FAST search engine back in 2010. With the SharePoint search, you are not limited to searching only SharePoint content, but you can now federate other external sources such as your file system, your document management systems, and applications such as Oracle, SAP, and so on. In fact, if you configure the search properly, you can turn SharePoint into a Google for your enterprise. Then we have integration. SharePoint supports REST APIs and can be used for integrating data from external systems. Several cloud providers, such as Salesforce, provide integration with on-prem and cloud versions of SharePoint. Then business intelligence. So while SharePoint is not a business intelligence engine, it definitely can be used for presenting visualizations. The Office 365 platform integrates with Power BI, and the on-prem version can be integrated with SSRS, Tableau, and Business Objects for distribution of reports and analytics. And then lastly, on that circle, we get to portals. This is one of the key strengths of SharePoint. The customization of the look and the feel, the extensions of the functionality uh, using web parts and data integration, all of these can help create internal and external facing portals. One of the biggest trends we're now experiencing in enterprises that are turning to Office 365 is their desire for internet portals for enterprise-wide use and departmental sites. Now, uh, not showing up on that slide is another point I'd like to mention uh, because it's something that's uh, it's interwoven to all of the things that we just talked about, and that is security and accessibility. 
Not only does SharePoint keep the outside world from accessing your valuable content, but it also gives you the internal ability to control who sees what content at multiple security levels. So if you want to control access to a certain document, no problem. Or you want to control access to a folder of documents or a list of documents or even an entire site, no problem. SharePoint makes it possible to store and present content to your entire organization in a smart manner using security controls that are configurable by you, the user, to respect the sensitivity needs of the organization. So to go back to the original question of what is SharePoint, SharePoint is not one of these things, but it is a platform that can be customized and configured for many different purposes and, in, and include a, a good mix of all of these capabilities. So now let's take a look at slide number five and we'll see a breakdown of the on-premise and online capability. Um, let's just sort of uh, compare the two versions across two dimensions uh, in an application context and a business context. Our intention is not to promote one version over the other, we're just comparing here. Each enterprise or organization has to make that determination based upon their drivers. So let's move on to slide number six. So first on the list here in the comparison is cost. One of the first questions that your management is going to ask you is, what is it going to cost? And even though that's a simple question, the answer is not that straightforward. Uh, let us start with the on-prem version. If you don't have SharePoint now and you want to roll out the platform, there is a capital expenditure. You're going to have to buy a few things to make it happen. And that capital expense depends on how big of a farm you want to set up. And if you're a big organization, you can't just have a prod environment. You'll need to have a dev, test, and prod environment to support a legitimate change control process. Recently, we were involved in a project where we set up an on-prem SharePoint environment for a company with about 15,000 employees. Just the hardware and license costs for SharePoint and SQL servers were well over $2 million. And that's just getting started. More than likely, there will be upgrade costs on the horizon. And, and here's why. Let's talk about that, go in a little bit of a deep dive here. SharePoint is evolving very fast, and Microsoft has been making new releases of the platform every three years or so. But the word on the street is that this frequency is going to increase, which means that if you don't upgrade, you're going to fall behind. And so if you're going to take total cost of ownership for a three or five year span, uh, you should probably factor in the upgrades uh, that you'll be doing during that period. So with online, you're going to switch from spending money on capital expenses to operational expenses. Keep in mind, SharePoint Online is not licensed separately, so whether you get the E or the G licenses, SharePoint is part of the bundle of services you get for your subscription. It's difficult to isolate the value for just the SharePoint service since it's all wrapped up in Office 365, but regardless, you are buying into the Elastic Cloud infrastructure that will scale according to your needs. So then moving on to the, the, the next row there, let's talk about maintenance, and I'd like to just sort of toss in staffing as well with that. Uh, one of the biggest differentiators for any deployment is the ongoing maintenance cost. And with on-prem, you are responsible for the day-to-day -day upkeep of the farm and the applications. Your team has to make the decisions about when to apply patches, which patches, hardware configuration changes, and so on. This means that you need to have a team that is staffed with the appropriate skills to do all of these things. With the online edition, you would shift this responsibility for the farm and SQL servers to Microsoft. If you are on Office 365, you need fewer in-house staff and their skills will be a little different. With online, your support team needs to have only skills for day-to-day -day administration and application development and support. This can have a significant cost impact to your total cost of ownership. There will be cost savings there, which in all fairness, should be considered as a means of offsetting at least some of the costs of cloud computing. And lastly on this slide, business continuity. Uh, there's two parts to this. Uh, one is about availability of the application and the other is about recoverability of the data. Your business continuity architecture should cover both of these. Uh, so availability typically deals with the network, infrastructure, operating system, and the application. If you're on-prem, you are responsible for building in the redundancies such that you can meet your service level commitments. 
But with Office 365, Microsoft provides a stringent SLA regarding the availability of the platform. And basically, that means this is on them, not you. Recoverability deals with recovering the data in the event of a user error, a virus attack, malware, etc. cetera. Uh, so for on-prem, you are responsible for, for recovering your data and you need to have the proper backup mechanisms and the tools such that you can revert back to the proper recovery point that is appropriate for your situation. On the other hand, with online, Microsoft provides a recycle bin. This is one way that, that you can recover uh, and it can be used for recovering at, uh, at a site or a file level. Uh, but it's very cumbersome and time consuming. In our experience, most organizations will use a third party tool for backup of the content so that they have greater control on the recovery point and the selection of the content that needs to be restored. So these costs should also be considered when comparing an on-prem and cloud environment choice. All right, let's move on to the next slide. We'll talk about the, the application perspective. Here we're going to address customization, security, and sovereignty as just three items to discuss. First, customization. As I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest values of SharePoint is it being an application platform for deploying custom apps. This is where the on-prem version has a leg up. With on-prem, you can deploy applications with client and server-side custom programming. For example, you might use .NET programming to extend the features of SharePoint and deploy sophisticated, customized applications. But with the online version, you're limited to client-side programming only. The custom application functionality has to be achieved with only the client-side object model, the CSOM. Now, with content security, both on-prem and online versions have robust security and access control mechanisms. And they both support Active Directory integration and the creation of SharePoint-based or AD-based security groups for access control. But there are some differences in how you could use SharePoint for external collaboration in the online versus on-prem versions. With SharePoint on-prem, all content is usually sitting behind your firewall. If you want to turn off external sharing, you can control it at the farm level. If you want to create an extranet for external collaboration, you can put the specific content in an extranet that you set up in the DMZ. But with online, you control external sharing through the admin center. You can control sharing at the tenant level, site collection level, site level, or at a document level. This also gives you the freedom to completely turn off external sharing if you'd like. You need to ensure that you have a well laid out policy and a well thought out governance model in place regarding security before you venture into external sharing with SharePoint Online, however. Otherwise, you could soon find yourself in a situation where your sensitive internal documents could be shared with external people. And let's face it, many folks who have yet to dive into the cloud have this as a primary fear. But those fears can be assuaged with good planning and a partner who has done this before. Sovereignty is the last point on this slide, and uh, data sovereignty is basically a concern for multinational companies, which may have to adhere to local laws regarding the content that they store in SharePoint. For example, the 2016 GDPR regulations regarding data security adds burden on companies with operations in Europe. And similarly, China has announced a new set of guidelines that went into effect in May. With on-prem, you can easily segregate your content into content databases and have them be physically located in a data center in the US or Europe or any other geographic region and allow you to easily comply with the local laws that may be applicable to you. On the other hand, with SharePoint Online, it's a different story. Microsoft just released its multi-geo op option for SharePoint Online, but it's not clear whether you can have your tenant span multiple geographic locations. Also, Microsoft is very clear that even if your data is located in a particular geographic location, they do not control which users or customers can access that data. So that responsibility will be on you. We bring this up just in case you have a multinational footprint. All right, so let's take a look at slide eight, which kind of is a, a bit of a summary of the, the previous two. Uh, so which of these options suits your organization. If you have to choose between on-prem 
on-prem and online, you should carefully evaluate various purposes and use cases that you're going to implement and evaluate which platform will serve you best. In fact, the use cases should be the primary consideration to drive that decision. Yes, cost is a key consideration also, but it should be a secondary one. Or else, this might come back and cost you even more in the future to fix problems that resulted from not spending enough time on the case study. So taking a look at this slide, you know, when is SharePoint on-premises the best option? Well, I, I guess trying to uh, distill this down to a couple of bullets, uh, the obvious answers are if you have large numbers of custom applications, you would probably lean to an on-premise solution. Or if you are using SharePoint for external collaboration. Uh, when is SharePoint online the better option? If a user wants to get things up and running quickly or if you want to reduce the costs of dedicated infrastructure, if you want to use new technologies such as Office, Delve, and Sway, or if you need to provide browser and mobile access. So that's very high level, a couple of different ways of, of trying to differentiate between those two options. I um, am also looking here at our list of attendees and uh, Let's, let's have an example here. Um, I see a few of you are from pharmaceutical companies, okay? You may need a collaboration platform to bring together your external partners and providers, but you may also need very strict access controls on your content. For this use case, you may want to shy away from the online solution. While online is secure, the fact still remains that if you have oversights and planning and don't set up the security properly, one slip could result in lost research, resulting in you know a hijacked and costly competitive advantage um, at the same time we also understand in the pharma space that speed to market is very important sharepoint online does have an advantage in this respect if you have your governance policies properly in place uh, the online platform could give you a competitive advantage there or if you have field-based workforce and want to enable them for mobile access sharepoint online gives you a shorter path for getting there so as you can see, there's a lot to chew on here, and one webinar isn't going to give you all the answers, but a systematic analysis is in order for sure. Um, I would also like to throw something else in here that's not on the slide. Um, I would like to bring up culture, because just from my own personal experience, I think this is another factor that's very important. So you should ask yourself, is my organization as a whole open to change? And a lot of times they say they are, but are they really? Uh, that transportation company that I mentioned, um, you know, they had gone through a decade of acquisitions and there was an awful lot of change being thrown at those folks in a short amount of time. And so then suddenly they wanted to do away with all of their uh, or many of their in-house systems and replace them with SharePoint. Uh, and that made that migration very, very difficult. So it's just another thing to consider is the culture that you have within your company. Make sure that your stakeholders and upper management are supportive of this movement. Um, and, and, you know, right now we're experiencing a gold rush phenomenon in corporate cloud-based computing. Uh, a lot of people are moving to the cloud. Um, but you may need to exercise a little bit of caution if it's uh, not a good environment for change. So let's move on to uh, slide number nine. Somewhere along the line, you have to make a choice. Uh, but you know, why choose? Do you have to choose one or the other? Um, your organization may be so complex that you can't be well served with just one or the other, with online or on-prem though. Uh, you just might need both. In fact, many organizations are coming to this realization. These organizations are carefully analyzing the use cases and setting up governance policies that clearly define the roles that the online and on-prem versions will play. Microsoft is also recognizing this trend and with SharePoint 2016, they've made several enhancements to minimize the gap between the two environments. For example, search has been enhanced so it can federate search indexes between the two tenants. And if you have AD synchronization between the Windows Server AD and Azure AD, users can see search results that are security trimmed. Their search results are filtered to only show them what they are allowed to see. Very important. All right, so let's move on to uh, slide 10. 
And this is where we're going to start to talk about this hybrid solution. So with a hybrid ar architecture, you can find a balance that will work for you between the two. Does hybrid mean double the work? Not necessarily. Microsoft's admin center and add-on tools are making the experience of administering and managing the two environments as similar as possible. So transitioning between the two should not be a heavy load to bear. In our experience, if you're going down the hybrid path, think first about an overarching governance model and create policies. Very important. For example, you should think about things like access control and security, using site templates and site request processes, and backup and restore. Uh, in a recent project where we did a hybrid implementation, we took about two or three weeks to first define the governance processes from an administration and content security perspective. Uh, we had this giant spreadsheet which clearly identified how the day-to-day -day activities will be handled in each of the two platforms. This was not just focused on systems, but also people and processes. Remember, the classic definition of an information system includes not just hardware and software, but also people and processes. Governance needs to tie all of that together. Let's take a look at slide 11. So here we have the uh, benefits of the hybrid approach. Um, and maybe we could also just call it the techniques that can give the hybrid approach its value, because that's really kind of what we have here is a list of techniques. So under custom apps, you can use a hybrid app launcher to retain your code flexibility with your on-prem apps, and then just call those from the cloud. That's a technique to leverage the pros of both solutions and kind of sidestep the cons, if you will. Then there's data residency. You can keep very sensitive information on premise, but leverage the online system's unified search capabilities to make it available online. With storage, we have kind of a cultural change in that we can motivate your user base to store their personal files in OneDrive rather than in the older My Sites to increase flexibility and reduce storage costs. And likewise, leveraging the best of both environments' abilities with content security and smartly designed extranets, we have numerous techniques to leverage the best of both worlds between on-prem and online. And this is not an exhaustive list. We have other valuable ways to build upon these strengths of both environments. And if you're interested in learning more about these techniques, I'll give you our contact info at the end of the webinar and we can talk more later. Uh, let's move on to slide 12. And the question becomes, this, by the way, is our last slide for those of you keeping an eye on your watch, uh, but what suits your organization? Uh, this gives us an opportunity here to compare all three opportunities together in one visual. I often get called into consulting engagements to advise our customers on which path to take, and I tell them every single time, I don't have a formula to plug in the numbers and just make that decision. This is really a qualitative decision, which is highly dependent upon your organizational purpose and what you want to do with the platform. I can give you some of the decision criteria as listed in these three pillars here, but you need to overlay your organization's goals and purpose and see what makes sense for you, All right? So you can kind of see here where, let's just say the first bullet, um, well, we, as we've already discussed, you have a lot of control with on-premises. Uh, let's say with application development and, and coding, you have uh, a, a lot of coding capability there, whereas it's just client side online, so you have limited control there. But you can balance that out a little bit in the hybrid solution, um, and you, you can still have full control over everything if you design it properly. Um, so I'm not gonna read all these bullets to you here, but basically, as you can see, the hybrid is just sort of a blending of both worlds, capitalizing and trying to emphasize and leveraging the pros uh, and, as I said before, somewhat sidestepping the cons of those environments. So I think that brings us to the end here, except we wanted to leave a little bit of time for some Q&A. Uh, Sarah, are you there? I am, just had to get myself off mute. Um, yes, we do have time to answer some questions here. So go ahead, take a moment, everyone. You can type your questions into the questions pane of your GoToWebinar control panel, and I will relay those on your behalf. Um, our first question here comes from Tom. 
In this webinar, you are saying there are benefits to having a hybrid solution for SharePoint, but are there any negative consequences to the hybrid? What would make us stick with just on-premises solution? Hmm. Well, I wouldn't want to characterize anything as a downside, any, any kind of a downside. I wouldn't want to characterize that as a negative consequence. So, um, I think a downside and a negative consequence might be two different things. But like I said earlier, you really need to consider if your use cases would be well served with a hybrid solution. So it sounds like you're already using on-prem, and so the capital expense, that's a sunk cost to you already. You've already invested in all that equipment. So next, you need to evaluate whether future expansion of the platform uh, should integrate these online capabilities. And keep in mind, before you roll out the online, you should think through a governance process. We keep coming back to that. Um, otherwise, as stated earlier, you know that, that could be a costly mistake. Uh, so that's a really important step up front that uh, really sets the stage for what should be done. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know if I would call a governance mistake as being a negative. It's more of a, a need to have better planning and governance structure in place before you venture into rolling out across the enterprise. Um, if you need some more information on that particular question, please drop me an email um, and we'll get back to you on that. I'll, I'll mention what my email is here in a uh, slide in just a moment. So I hope that answered your question. Um, do we have another? All right, thank you. Um, yes, we did. We got another question in here. Um, the next question reads, we currently have an on-prem solution in place and certain aspects of online seem attractive, but aside from the cost we'd experience with Microsoft to introduce the hybrid, what can we expect for our own internal costs related to changes to database architecture, Active Directory, firewalls, et cetera? How can we quantify our internal costs if we decide to go hybrid? Okay, so really um, you're wondering, if just to paraphrase that, yes, you have to cut a check to Microsoft. Uh, we all know that, but you're, you're very astute there in saying, hey, there's gonna be some other costs that you will incur uh, within the company to uh, do these introductions. So um, I think there's there's really two approaches that we could take here for bringing an online tenant into your organization. Uh, you could keep your existing on-prem and, uh, and, and keep the online, keep those as two distinct platforms and keep them separate. Uh, you know, you would need a governance process that would spell out the types of sites that would go into each of those. Uh, for example, you could say that project sites will be on the online version and open that up to your organization as a collaboration tool for your employees uh, and then keep the on-prem version for more tightly governed content. Uh, and then the cost associated with such an approach would be limited to just the Microsoft subscription and some other additional administrative costs. Um, so that would be keeping them separate. And then you could have another choice, which would be to try to do a more unified experience for your users. And you would have to use some things like uh, federated search, um, external collaboration with uh, that's leveraged with SharePoint Online. And uh, you could go with mobile capabilities for the online solution, um, although that could involve a lot more of an investment and, and more setup time. You could also migrate some of the content from the on-premise environment to the online environment, and as part of that, maybe even rewrite some of your applications. Um, and, and there's a lot of other uh, things that you could do there as well, but uh, my key thing here is that creating this unified experience, uh, that's gonna require a lot of careful planning and execution, um, and it's gonna be more expensive as well. So I hope that answered your question again going to try to keep these um, the, the answers short without knowing specific details about your situation. So um, um, keep an eye on my email address here. We'll, we'll put that up on the screen here in just a moment. But I think we probably have time for another question. Okay, yeah, I think we have time for one more here. Um, the next question is from Michelle. You mentioned in the presentation there are missing or limited features in the online version. Can you name some of the differences? Hmm, sounds like a quiz, 
quiz show challenge. <laughs> I can hear a clock ticking. Um, let's see here. Now, actually, I do have over here, I have a few things written down from my administrative team. I know they've got a big list of all these things, but I, you know, some of those, as I'm reading here, custom site provisioning pages, um, you don't have that in, in online. Uh, AAM or alternative access mapping, host header site collections and custom site definitions, and and, and there uh, it's a big list. There are a lot of those administrative things, but um, for me, I tend to focus on the user experience, and we've sort of been talking about that up until now. So let me let me rephrase this in that context, um, and and maybe uh, let me not talk about missing or limited. Uh, as you mentioned in your question, I think we use that terminology, but um, from a user perspective, things could also just be different features. And I can think of a couple of examples here. Uh, for example, content permissions. So um, I actually went through uh, with a recent client, a situation where um, they migrated very quickly to the online environment and how you would, uh, give somebody access through a link to get to one of your documents is suddenly a little bit more complex in the online version. Uh, it used to be simpler, if you will, when you're just in the on-premise arena. And so now suddenly there's a little bit of a training issue involved there that's, that you have a lot of people asking, wait a minute, I used to just be able to right-click right here and grab the URL and then send it to somebody and they could get to it. And now you've got all these different choices. Who who needs to have access and why do the URLs suddenly look a lot longer? And, and there might be a lot of questions that you get there. So yeah, there are differences like that that are going to affect uh, the end users. And then also another big thing to consider, and this is less of a SharePoint issue, but I think it should be mentioned, that while you're using SharePoint, if somebody tries to open up a document, just wanna make a few changes, now there's a bigger plethora of opportunity there for how you want to do that. In the online world, uh, you can launch uh, sort of a skinnier, skinny down version of one of the Office apps like Excel. Uh, and just if, if you just need to change some content on screen and, and go into a column of numbers and change them, great. Uh, you can use the online version of Excel. Or if you need to be working on the VBA and, and working on macros and things like that, that's probably not the wisest thing to do using that online app. So uh, you would want to use a client side app installed on the on your computer. So uh, that's a little different having to choose between those two. So yes, you're always going to have these situations where there are differences and, and maybe I don't want to call them missing or limited, but things are definitely different between the two and that can have an impact on uh, your end users. So um, I think that's probably about it. We're trying to keep this uh, uh, relatively short. And um, I, I let, okay, I see Sarah went ahead and jumped to the slide with my email address. So if I'm not the person who can answer your question, and in fact, I'm on another uh, high profile project right now, I may be farming some of your questions off to others who will get back to you, but I'll also be involved in reviewing these. So please send your questions to me, mike.do at vertexcs.com. And I guess with that, we're finished with the questions. Sarah, thank you for your help and everyone else. Uh, thank you very much for your attendance and we hope to hear from you soon and have a great day. All right, thank you such, so much, Mike, and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. Just a reminder, you will receive a follow-up with the link to view the recording. Also, we'll respond to uh, the questions that we were unable to get to during our Q&A. On behalf of Vertex and our presenters today, thank you so much for joining us and have a great rest of your day.